Hi, welcome. I'm Julie Thompson, Executive Director of PAC TV. And today we're hosting a COVID-19 update for the town of Duxbury featuring the Duxbury Senior Center or Council on Aging. Uh, we're hosting these forums every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Watch in Duxbury on Comcast 15 or Verizon 39. You can also view online by visiting our streaming channel at pactv.org slash live. To ask questions during the forum, please email them to duxburyinfo at pactv.org and the forum replay schedule and additional Duxbury coverage, please visit pactv.org slash Duxbury. Joanne Moore, the director of Duxbury um, Council on Aging, is going to um, introduce Kay Cooney. Welcome, Joanne and Kay. Well, thank you so much for having us again this week and every week we learn so much. I know after I left last week's show, I emptied out my vitamin cabinet cabinet and need to do a little restocking of uh, good vitamins. I guess my gummy uh, vitamins really weren't such a good idea. So, Kay, I'm thrilled to have you here today to talk a little bit more about those vitamins we should be taking, how we can find them in uh, our food and just learn a little bit more about how to keep ourselves healthy. So thanks so much for being here today. Good morning. So I feel like such a killjoy, right? Of, of Ixnade, the um, Reese's peanut butter cups, of um, making people throw their stuff out, change how they're eating. But in the end, it's worth it because as we all know, um, especially lately, our health truly is everything. Um, so my thanks to you ladies for your support and helping me pull this off each week. And to all the folks over at Duxbury behind the scenes, um, we have some amazing folks there who have been helping us pull this off. So what I'm gonna do today, just so we know when we can follow along, if you have a vitamin or supplement that you specifically want answers to, and one of you had asked a question last week about calcium and we're gonna get to that today. Um, if you have questions about supplements, get them in and we will try and answer as many as we can. Um, and what I did was I tried to pick what, what appear to be the most commonly used supplements as well as those that are trending right now. We're seeing a lot in the news about zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D. So we, we're going to tackle some of those today. Um, I'm going to go back to the presentation that I used last week um, to do a very, very quick refresher and then move forward. Um, and then Joanne, I'm going to have you. So Joanne so nicely brought one of her um, supplements to ask me a question this morning before the, we started. And I would love to use the label on that as one of our, part of our teaching, if that works for. Oh, for the back side of the label. Yeah. So you so you picked it up at a local drugstore. I did. Right. So you assume that a local drugstore, a large chain, is a safe place to grab your multivitamin. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then give me some of the things that, that, that targeted. So after last week, give me some of the things that sort of made you go, oh. Well, so it said other ingredients. So this is a D3 and it said soybean oil, gelatin, and in parentheses, it said bovine, which I wasn't sure about that, and glycerin and corn oil. And so I threw away about three containers. This was on the maybe container. Um, and I wanted to ask you about it this morning. All right, so when we start seeing like soybean oil and um, corn oil, essentially what we're looking at is hydrogenated oils, which if you go back to, I always feel like it was like the 80s when everybody started doing the margarine or butter thing. They, are, they contribute to cardiac disease. So it's hard to believe that you could actually go to your local pharmacy and pick up something as fine as a multivitamin and be increasing your cardiac risk factor. Um, but it's no different than going to McDonald's and getting a hamburger at the drive-thru window and comparing that to the quality of like a, a grass-fed Kobe beef, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's it, 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 pay me now or pay me later. Right. So I thought that was an example of, you know, looks harmless, could be harmful type thing. Okay. Um, so thank you for doing that. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Oh. All right, so we're going to pull up the screen this morning. We're, we're pulling up the slideshow from, where are we, right? We're over here. Let me just change my view. Okay, so I'm going to go back a few slides first just to sort of remind folks. Um, I believe, go back three. It's the, how do we do this? 
Yep. How do we take our, our supplement safely protocol? Okay. So again, putting some thought into what we're doing. And while we're going through this, if you want to grab your supplements and take a look at them as we're going, you're definitely going to want pen and paper. All of this will be put up on the Duxbury um, Senior Center page. And extra bonus, extra bonus for the truly geeky of you out there like me. Um, I ate was to find a consumer guide on multivitamins and supplements and it had a lot of good information in it, like 60 pages of it, but what an amazing resource um, to reinforce and help you look at some of the things you may have in your um, cabinets that we didn't go over today. So choosing the right product, right? So making sure that we have things that have um, as close to food um, source on them, right? Um, Look, blah, 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 blah. Uh, can you do it this with the dietary change as opposed to doing a supplement, right? Remember, we always want to do it with our food first. Have you had blood work or is the blood work available to quantify your deficiency? So for me, I wanted to know specifically if the products I was working were helpful and I was concerned that I was deficient in both B and D. And what I did was I asked, asked my doctor to draw my blood before I started taking the supplement. So I took two weeks off the supplement, had my blood drawn, and then was able to see a significant difference. So I knew that that was a good product for me. Um, all right, where did my little screen go? There, it's like magic. Uh, hold on, I just wanna switch this so that I'm not leaning into. I guess not. Um, uh, checking the ingredients, right? So looking on the bottle, looking for dyes, looking for things like your hydrogenated fats. Soybean oil is not a good one. Corn oil is not a good one. Um, and then taking these to your pharmacist and looking for drug-drug interactions. And we're going to talk a little tiny bit about that today. So things that we want to be looked for. Um, and looking at the um, recommended dose, starting low and seeing how your body responds to it. Okay, continue your supplement for 30 days. And at the end of a 30 days, pay attention. Are you sleeping better? Are you feeling better? Does your skin look better? Right, your skin's a wonderful indicator of internal health. Um, and these are the things that you want to be looking at. So we're gonna start today with the supplements. Now, as you can imagine, there are literally thousands of them. So I picked um, seven that we're gonna go over today. I look forward to any questions that you may have. Um, and if there's ones that we didn't cut, we don't cover today, we can jump, we can add them to next week's um, presentation. So no big deal. All right, so we're gonna start with magnesium. Give me one sec, cause I just wanna fix my little screen. Okay, so magnesium. So I am on slide number, are we all? 13. Yeah, we are. Number 13. So magnesium is an essential nutrient. And what that means is our body doesn't make it. So we have to get it from food or supplements. Um, what is magnesium responsible for? Magnesium is hugely important, especially to this particular age group. Um, magnesium um, helps support bone health. It also can calm our nervous system and counteract our stress response. And considering the fact that so many of us, um, I, I, I don't want to say every single one of us is it stressed out, but we're all at an elevated stress and therefore depleting magnesium faster than normal. Um, it will help with sleep issues. So when people tell me they're having a hard time sleeping, one of the things we talk about is their gut health, but then we also talk about adding a little magnesium. It regulates muscle and nerve function. So for folks who have restless legs or sore and achy legs, a magnesium rub is wonderful. Um, it also helps balance out your sugar levels and it makes protein. Um, it contributes to bone development and even DNA production in our body. So it's pretty important. So what are some of the things, where can we get our magnesium from? So, and again, remember we're, our number one priority is always eating it if we can versus supplementing it. Oaks, soybeans, beans, tofu, brown rice, nuts, especially Brazil nuts, um, pumpkin, 
right? So those are some of the things, and that's not an exhaustive list, but that but that's a good one. And you'll see spinach shows up a lot. Whether you like spinach or not, you know, you should learn to like spinach. Um, that's how, that's my relationship with spinach. I'm not a spinach person, but what I do is I chop, 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 chop finely, like 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 an herb, put it in my freezer, and then I'll throw a handful into my chili or different sauces, and it gets hid pretty well. Um, so spinach is definitely your friend. Now, here's here's a good learning point, and this goes back to the whole label issue from last week. There are so many forms of magnesium, okay? What you want is the ones that are the most readily absorbable, absor absorbable to your body. They're not always the cheapest. So what you'll see is the magnesium in your supplement may not be one of these ones. It may be a, che uh, a cheaper way of getting it, but with less absorption. But for something as important as magnesium, you're looking for ag magnesium aspartate, magnesium citrate, magnesium lactate, and magnesium chloride. Beyond that, you get very minimal down to single digit absorption into your body. Okay, questions? Is there one of those that's better than another or are they all equal? Um, I would say I usually go with the magnesium aspartate. Like I put them in ranking order of where, where I feel they, they, they hit you the most. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I heard. I thought you had to take calcium with magnesium for absorption. Is that true? So there's this whole cascade of what enhances what and your body naturally has, your body will have more calcium than it will have magnesium, right? Just based on the food availability and, and, and calcium can act as a, a hormone and a precursor. So do you need to have the calcium with it or is it going to be there and, and readily available? Do you know what I mean? It's one of those ones where, so like vitamin D and calcium is a hand in hand partnership that needs to happen. But for me, magnesium, I always feel like you've got, you. most people have the calcium stores. So it's a standalone. I think so, yes. Okay, excellent. Thanks for clarifying. Yes. Okay, next, right on to calcium. So let's talk about calcium a little because this is one of those ones that a lot of folks are taking and some should and some shouldn't. So calcium, right, you know, when you think of it as a substance, it's chalky, there, there's a foundation to it. Um, who should be considering a calcium supplement? Because it's not for everybody. It can leave some byproducts in the body and it also can impact um, your cardiac rhythm and function. So if you're on a vegan diet, you will need calcium, right? Yeah, so for folks who are not doing any dairy, you're gonna need the calcium. If you're lactose intolerant or you limit your dairy products, you're gonna be at risk for less calcium in your body. If you consume large amounts of protein or sodium, which can cause the body to do a lot of excreting, you're gonna pull and leach your calcium out. Folks with osteoporosis, yes, you should be supplementing with calcium. However, right, I'm gonna leave a comma there. Um, Long-term treatments with corticosteroids, so if you've done prednisone, um, or uh, methotrexate or any of those, your bones have probably been leached a little bit of the calcium. Um, and if you have certain bowel or digestive diseases you're, and you're not absorbing your calcium, you too should supplement. So the, the caveat with calcium is this, folks who have cardiac history or folks with kidney stones don't necessarily want to be taking any additional calcium into their body unless they absolutely have to. It's gonna cause its own series of problems. So if you're somebody who has chosen to supplement because you have osteoporosis, but you have disease, that bears a conversation with your pharmacist and or your doctor. Um, it, it's not one of those supplements that you just take willy nilly. So, um, yeah. Okay, if you've taken a steroid, a couple years ago, is it still something you could consider that you should be taking it or at once time goes by, you're fine? So I think once time goes by and you've had no bone matrix problems. Okay. 
right? So it's for people who have been on prolonged daily prednisone for years and years, and they've got very brittle bones. They're prone to osteoporosis, osteopenia. They've had fractures, pathological fractures. Um, th th that's when you know that the steroids have gone in and sort of robbed the calcium out of the bones. Okay, thanks. Okay. How do you get your calcium? So obviously all of your dairies, yogurt, broccoli, kale, nuts, nut butter, bean, um, beans and lentils. So there's a lot of different places you can get your calcium from. And this really is a good one for you to do your very best to sort of eat into it versus supplementing because of the potential side effects. And when you're looking for what's your best form of calcium, it's calcium citrate. So that's your, your one that is most readily absorbed into your, your body. So quick question, Kay, what about if you drink almond milk or rice milk or goat milk and not dairy milk? So almond milk, because of the nut function, you are gonna get some calcium. So I think it really depends on, so rice milk, you're not going to get it unless it's been fortified. And again, we're looking for natural sources, but almond milk should have a, a significant, I have to look that one up, but I, I believe almond milk has a decent amount of calcium in it. Okay, just curious. Yeah. Do you like the almond milk? Have you gone? Yeah, I like almond milk. Yeah, I've switched over to almond milk also. Um, I've always been lactose intolerant, so I've never been a big milk drinker. So to me, it you know, yeah. it's neither here nor there. But I use the almond milk when I make my shakes. And um, to me, yeah. it, it you know gives the same texture, same flavor. You know, so yeah, and okay. and and I feel like you're getting less of the hormone stuff, unfortunately, that's getting into um, a lot of our processed dairy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, zinc. So everybody, right? The president's talking about zinc. Everybody's talking about zinc. Zinc is like the hot, you know, commodity right now. So who needs zinc? So I found this to be kind of funny. So zinc tends to be lower as we age and zinc will go lower as we're under stress. So when, when asking the question who needs zinc, the answer is everybody, right? Mm. I mean, at this point, everybody needs some zinc. So zinc supports our immune system and it helps our bodies use, so it's, it's part of the conversion factor for proteins, fats, and carbohydrates and converting them to energy. It helps with wound healing. So back in the day when I was working in nursing homes, folks with wounds that weren't healing we're always put on a zinc vitamin C protocol. Um, zinc helps balance your acid base balance. So we were talking about this before the show, Joanne. This is one of the ones that helps keep your body in alkalinity versus acidic. Mm -hmm. So we, we were talking about pH. And I don't know if we've talked about this before, but on the pH spectrum, most diseases cannot occur in an alkaline environment. So when you've gone to acidic, you have opened yourself up to a host of infectious disease as well as cancer. So we wanna always stay to the middle and to the left over here into alkalinity. What helps alkalinity? Or, or, or actually, let's do it this way. What brings us into acidic? Sugar, sugar, sugar. So processed foods, um, unref uh, refined um, carbs, um, lots of sugar bring, brings us over to the dark side right over into acidic. So eating clean, healthy, green vegetables brings us over into the more of a alkalinic um, reading. So okay. zinc, zinc helps with that. Um, and now the thing with zinc, so most vitamins and minerals, for the most part, it's hard to do any harm. With zinc, you have two issues. If you don't have enough or if you have too much, right? So if you have too much zinc, you actually can start suppressing your immune system. If you don't have enough zinc, you don't have a strong immune system. So it's kind of like, you know, um, the, the Goldilocks and the three bears. You need it to be just right, okay? So you don't want to overdo it on the zinc. Um, where are you going to find zinc? So oysters, grass-fed beef, pumpkin seeds. Here's spinach showing up again. Organ meats. Tahini, sardines, brown rice, wheat germ, and tempeh is a fermented tofu, um, for those of you that are curious as to what that is. 
Um, not one of my favorite things, um, I, I, you know, but it's good for you. Um, all right, any questions on our friend Zinc? No. Nope. So you can see why they have been recommending this lately to go along. Um, vitamin D. So I, for, for most women, most women tend to be deficient in B and D despite multivitamin supplementation and a good diet. So that we have a pretty high prevalence of D and B. Now, here's the fascinating thing. The fascinating thing is your vitamin D, you can walk outside, expose as much of your skin as possible for 15 minutes a day and get your vitamin D requirement. And yet we continue to have a problem with this as a society. And so think about that, this, and I think we mentioned this a few weeks ago, with the advent of clothing and those of us who live in the Northeast, so we're indoors and look at what we've all been doing quarantine wise, right? For the last couple of, um, I guess we're going almost on months now, right? It, we don't, we have not had that 15 minutes a day exposure to the sun. And during the winter months, that's tough to do. So ideally, what you want to do is have your 15 minutes outdoors exposing as much of your skin as you can and as makes sense based on the temperature, okay? That's your best way to get it. Now, understand when you're outside and you have sunblock on, that blocks the sun from converting vitamin D into the skin. So that's another way that we're, that we're um, blocking vitamin D synthesis. So that's what the challenge is. So in this case, it's not eating it, it's exposing your skin and getting outside as much as you can with a minimum of 15 minutes a day. Does it help you? Can you store more if you're out there, right? So you go to the beach on Saturday and you lay out in the sun for three hours. Does that count as your vitamin D for the week? Absolutely not. Now you're just sunburning yourself, right? So 15 minutes a day is what you're looking for. Where are you gonna find vitamin D? Um, organ meats, liver and kid, uh, sorry. Oops, sorry, I jumped ahead. No, I'm not jumping now, I'm going back. So folks with liver disease and kidney disease have difficulty with vitamin D absorption, as do people with gut issues and most women, right? So the breakdown of vitamin D happens in the liver and in the kidneys. So if those organ systems aren't working well for you, more likely than not, you may need to supplement on vitamin D. Did you have a question, Joanne? Well, I was just thinking, why are women, why do women have a shortage of B and D? What's the difference between men and women? I So with, with D, it's because vitamin D is part of a hormone cascade and uh, is considered a, a precursor. So your vitamin Ds, your calcium, all of that gets pulled into our um, uh, women's processing of their whole hormonal system. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that for B, but I will look into that. Okay. So I it never. Just seemed, it just seemed interesting that most women have that challenge. I know I had my blood work done and those were the two things I came up shy in. And I just, is it something with hormones? Is it as we age? Is it because of childbirth? Is it? Yeah, it's, defi it? it's definitely tied into our hormones. Because if you think about it, you know, where is the osteoporosis and the osteopenia in our society? Always women over men. And that's part of the whole vitamin D, calcium, hormonal cascade. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but B, I'm not sure. That's All right. A good that's question. question for next week. There we go. I, I, love, a, I love a good question. Um, so vitamin D helps our bodies absorb calcium. Um, so we need the D and the calcium. They go hand in hand together. And not getting enough vitamin D can increase your likelihood of getting sick. It increases your chance of um, bone and back pain specifically. Um, it can also contribute to hair loss as well as bone loss. Um, and this is something that you can find in fatty fish, egg yolks, milk, liver, so organs. Um, one of the things we went through, and again, we go back to the 70s and the 80s where people stopped eating their egg yolks. Egg yolks are necessary for several different vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Um, so you want to eat your egg, your, your whole egg these days. Um, so if you happen to get onto that kick of not eating much eggs or the egg yolk, 
um, because of cholesterol. There's things in that yolk that are very valuable that we all need. So how many eggs should you have a week? Oh, I think that depends. Um, so I know, so one of the doctors that I follow and that I like, um, he eats two eggs a day. So he, he, you know, I don't know what his recommendation is, but I know he eats a lot of eggs, mm -hmm. you know, I like eggs as a source of protein. They're lean, I, you know, they're, they're a cheap, um, good source. You can get a free range eggs fresh from a neighbor, you know, just driving around the neighborhood and seeing it, the whole eggs for sale, you know, for three bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, and it keeps you full. Like if you have eggs for breakfast versus a bowl of cereal, the bowl of cereal, you need a second or third bowl of cereal where eggs, you're done. A absolutely. And they're really flexible, right? There's a lot of things you can do with eggs and you can, you know, jazz them up. So right. I, I, I love my eggs. All right. What do we have next? Do we fish oil next? Um, fish oil. Here we go. Okay. Let's go off to fish oil. So fish oil. So um, it's reasonable for people with major cardiac risk factors, high, high, high blood glucose, um, cholesterol levels, diabetes, to get yourself on a fish oil supplement. Okay. Fish oil is pretty important um, and it helps with depression bowel inflammation, right? We're all talking about gut health. Fish oil is very helpful for that. Helps with arthritis, uh, macular degeneration. And there's some pretty good science around it helping with cognitive functioning. So the high fat of the fish oil is the good fat. It's the fat that we need. Um, and it also has been directly correlated to reducing triglyceride levels. Um, which is helpful for many of us with, with cardiac disease. And then comes the question of, so there's a couple of challenges with fish oil that we should talk about. So a lot of our fish source has been contaminated with mercury. So for the, those folks who eat a lot of fish, one of the things that doctors will check for is mercury. Um, we always tell pregnant women not to be eating a whole lot of fish and or um, sushi and, and worried about the whole mercury and fish thing. You want to know that your fish supplement has been cleaned and distilled and that there is a way to make sure that all the heavy metals have been pulled out. What you don't want is somebody taking cheap um, fish and making contaminated liver oil because you're doing as much harm to your body as you are doing good. This is definitely one of the supplements where you want to spend a little bit of money to know that you are not bringing heavy metals into your body. Um, you don't want mercury and leads in your system. So the two things that we want to look on the ingredients is to make sure there's no mercury, no lead. Is there any other thing we should not have in that? So most will not ever post that, right? So what they do is a don't ask, don't tell. So if you don't test your oil, you don't have to put what could possibly be in it. What you want is a manufacturer that says, we distill and clean and we're willing to show you um, our COA, our certificate of analysis, that there is nothing in here but your, your omegas and your A's and D's. Okay. right? Some people won't do that. So if you're getting a fish oil at the store for five bucks, I can guarantee you that you, you're ingesting some mercury and lead, right? You, you have to pay a little bit of money to have a good supplement on fish oil. Now, there's two different types of fish. There is fish oil and there is cod liver oil, okay? Mm. They both come from fish. So fish oil comes from everything but the liver, Cod liver oil comes from Atlantic cod and it comes from specifically that type of fish and it's liver. Regular um, fish oil comes from a wide variety of fish. Any old fish can be in there. Now, this is where you, you have to decide what it is that you need for your body. And speaking with your pharmacist can be very helpful with this. So fish oil has more omega-3s and it has um, more vitamin A and D. Okay. So if you are somebody who is going to be D supplementing anyhow, or you need a little bit more vitamin A in your diet, right? Associated with eye health, you're going to go the fish oil route. If you want less of those things and you want just the pure oil, 
Cod liver oil has less vitamin A and vitamin D in it. So it comes down to, it, it's not which one's better, it's, it's what you need is what it comes down to. So I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know, fish oil can have a, a tough thing on me after. I, uh, burping up fish oil can be really hard on the, uh, how, yeah. when's the best time to take it? And how is it the best way to take it? So <laughs> I hate fish oil burps. Mm -hmm. um, so you almost always want to take any of your supplements with food because if you think about it this way, it's sort of a, a stealth way of, of your body doesn't know whether you took it in a capsule form or whether that content was in the food you just ate. So as your body's revving up to digest and absorb, you're kind of like going into stealth mode and sneaking in some extra omega-3s or calcium or whatever. You're essentially fortifying your food. So eat, taking your supplements with a, a meal, a large meal, and not just washing them down with toast and coffee, I think is paramount. So okay. what I would say is take, and it doesn't matter whether you take them in the morning or the evening, take, take your vitamins with your largest meal of the day so that you're getting this unbelievably wonderful fortified meal going in. That will reduce some of the fish burps. I think what happens is when, you, when it sits there in your stomach and there's no motility going on, mm -hmm. it just hangs out there for a while and keeps repeating itself. So sneak it in with some food and see if that takes care of it for you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, what do we got next? Next we melatonin. have melatonin. Um, oh, I love melatonin. So <laughs> <laughs> melatonin is, um, it's, it's a hormone that regulates our sleep-wake cycle. And supplementing with melatonin is great for folks who are travelers and have jet lag, as well as folks with sleeping problems. Um, we use melatonin until we can get somebody's body back regulated, okay? There's a lot of reasons why we have sleep issues. Gut health is one of the big ones. Um, pain, anxiety, adrenal fatigue. There's a bunch of reasons why we stay awake at night. But melatonin is one of those um, uh, hormones that we can supplement with that can be really, really helpful. You have to do it right, okay? First of all, Let's, let's go back to last week and the whole gummies. If you are putting a supplement in your body at bedtime and it's laced with a bunch of sugar, don't be surprised when you're laying awake at three in the morning, right? You're, 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 you're sparking your body to start doing some digestion and, and working with the sugar. You want to take a supplement. You want it to be melatonin and melatonin only. There should be no other nonsense um, in your supplement. You're looking for about three to five milligrams, okay? That's what a nightly dose is for most people. You can go as high as 10 to 12 milligrams. But what I would say is if you're somebody who's regularly requiring 10 to 12 milligrams of melatonin to go to sleep, there's a bigger underlying issue that we need to tackle, right? But it's there if you get, it, if you get yourself into trouble, okay? Now, be mindful of this because most of the over-the-counter melatonin um, supplements available are one to two milligrams. So people take one and go, oh, it doesn't work. So you really want to be in the ballpark of about five milligrams on this. So look and see what your milligram strength is when you're buying it. And then here's the other piece people don't realize when you take your melatonin. You don't take your melatonin as you're running into bed. You take it one to three hours before bed which means for many of us, you're basically taking your melatonin at dinner time, right? So if you're an early sleeper and you eat your dinner at five, you're taking your melatonin if you're an eight o'clock bedtime person. So you may want to set a little alarm on your phone to remind you whatever your bedtime is minus three. And what happens is, so think about this. Many people take melatonin. They go, oh, I was wide awake at 2 a.m. And I'll say, well, when'd you take it? And they'll go, oh, about 11 o'clock at night. And I'll go, well, yeah, that's when it's per programmed to work, about three hours after. So make sure you allow yourself enough time to get this into you and that you're taking enough of it. Now, what's interesting, and I love this, is let's say you go, no, I don't want, I don't want to take a supplement. I don't want to take a hormone. Tart cherry juice is full of melatonin, full of it. 
So you could get an all natural tart cherry juice. You could make your own, you could blend it. Um, but getting tart cherries in is huge, 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 huge for helping with sleep. As is, these are your other ones that are good for sleeping. Um, corn, asparagus, tomatoes, pomegranate, olives, grapes, broccoli, cukes, um, rice, barley, uh, peanuts, walnuts, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, mustard seeds. So there's your sources of melatonin. So what I would say is if you're somebody who's really, really struggling with sleep, take a look at that list and see what you can incorporate into your dinner or your dessert um, to help support getting yourself to sleep. So you're saying those things you should eat close to the end of the day, not at the beginning of the day to help your sleep pattern. Absolutely. Yeah. How yeah. about melatonin comes in a tablet? It comes in liquid. I've seen it in a spray. Is there one version that's better than another or? I think what it comes down to with it is the fewest ingredients on the bottle. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, closest to the ground is, is what's going to always get us where we need to be. Okay, great. All right, vitamin C, another one so hot in the media lately. So vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid. This is one of the vitamins that I feel like people are pretty well educated about because when you were a kid and you started getting a cold and your mom would say, go drink some orange juice, we started that vitamin C association at a very young age. Um, vitamin C makes the collagen in our body, which is critically important to our blood vessels, tendons, ligaments, bones. Um, it is a massive antioxidant cellular cleaner. So this is why you've been seeing treatment with um, the coronavirus with um, IV, vitamin C, large dosing vitamin C. They're like little um, scouring bubbles, right? That's all I can think of on the, from the commercial, the scouring bubbles. They are going all through the body and they are scavenging and picking up all of the different antioxidant, um, acting as an antioxidant, picking up all the scavengers from the waste of um, our human, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They clean up the mess from all of the different oxidative stress and all the different things in our body tremendously. Really, really great cellular cleaner. Um, they also boost our immune system. So as they're going around and they're cleaning and they're get, getting all the garbage that's in our blood and in our cells, they're also triggering the immune system to go, hey, hey, look what I found over here. Come here, I need you guys. And it's it, it gets the immune system being more responsive and on the go. So you get constant small reactions in white cells out there proliferating as opposed to a big cascade which is what we feel when we're sick. Um, they all, it also may play a role in heart health. And when do we find them? So um, citrus, any of your citrus fruit, fruits, tomatoes, broccoli, squash, peppers, all sources, great sources of vitamin C. And you forgot the potatoes, they're on there too. Oh yeah, sorry. You know, <laughs> <laughs> of course you saw the potatoes. Exactly. <laughs> I forgot that was another thing I ruined in your life. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting close to the end, but I know you have one more uh, vitamin to share with us, Kay. All right, so vitamin B complex. Thank you for that heads up. So vitamin B complex is, is a black hole. We could do a whole show on B in and of itself, and we, I will get back to you next week with why B and women. So um, vitamin B is a class of water-soluble vitamins, meaning your body doesn't store them. So the only vitamins your body stores is A, D, E, and K. So everything else you need to replenish on a daily basis, okay? So they are chemically distinct compounds. They coexist in similar or the same foods, um, and yet they all do something a little bit different. So without, and because you're going to have access to this, and I want to be respectful of time, understand that the B complexes are really about helping the body operate efficiently and generate the energy that it needs to do what it needs to do. The one vitamin I would, I never skip. And so you end up, if, if you see a cause and effect that you take something and this happens, the one that I see the most benefit with for me is vitamin B. When I take a vitamin B, I have all the energy I need to do to get through the day. When I don't take my vitamin B, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, drain, you know, dry, dry, blah, blah, blah. what's the word? 
dragging. Thank you. Sorry. So anyhow, what's in vitamin B? So when you say vitamin B12 or vitamin B3, there's all different vitamins, but vitamin B complex includes all eight of them. Thiamine, pyridoxine, folate, uh, folate B12, biotin. So I'm going to just go through really, really quick. These are about energy. These are about hair. These are about nails. This is about anemia. This is about building strong blood cells. Um, they, they are a powerhouse in and of themselves. And again, most women tend to be deficient in them. So we look at B and D as the supplements um, that most women our age need. And B complex seems like we can get it all in one thing. So if you're going to do one B, do them all. In right? one little tablet. I think so. So if you're going to buy a tablet, don't don't buy a B1 and a B12. Buy a B, B complex and know that you're getting the right balance of all of them. Well, Kay, thank you so much for all this wonderful information. It will be wonderful to have it up on the website for everyone to review after. And I'm sure I'll have lots more questions when I go back to my cupboard again this week. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, Julie, did you have any last minute questions? I didn't. I just, once again, just a bevy of information. Thank you so much, Kay. And Kay is, by the way, an advanced practice geriatric nurse and wellness coach. And we really appreciate you here every Wednesday. So uh, we date stamp this, as you can see from the top of the screen. It's Wednesday the 27th. And um, we will see you again next Wednesday. If you want to watch this again, packtv.org slash Duxbury. And have a wonderful week. And from PACTV, this is Julie signing off. Thanks, ladies. Take care.